Hi, yeah, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this week's Turning Project video. I hope you're all well and you've had super creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. And the big, big thank you as always to everybody for your comments on last week's project video. I am getting round to replying to them. Um, so if I haven't replied to you just yet, then uh, hold on, I will very soon. Um, I've not had much luck in the past with turning purple heart. I find it quite a temperamental wood and it's very hard. Um, but in the sanding process, um, I have actually managed to split and crack pretty much every piece I've ever turned. Um, so I thought this week I would give it another go um, and turn a piece that's been inspired um, by a Canadian turner, Douglas J. Fisher. I'll put a link down to his uh, website below. I, his, his work is mind-blowing. It's absolutely stunning. So this piece will be inspired by Douglas J. Fisher of Canada and uh, Douglas if you're watching, which I'm fairly certain you're not, thank you for the inspiration. Right, um, it's uh, about a 10 inch um, purple heart blank and I need to start by getting it round of course. So I'm going to take a freshly sharpened bowl gouge, start the lathe nice and slow, check that everything's locked down first, that always helps. And then start getting it round. off the piece camera but the little dimple that's been made in the tenon by the tailstock being brought up is going to be important at the very end of the process. So first off I need to start shaping uh, shaping the bowl. I'm not going to go through the whole thing I'll just speed through it because you've seen me turn this shape lots. and I've got the finish or I've got the finished shape I'm quite pleased with it nice little tenon on the bottom nice sweeping line um, and now I need to sand it so I'm going to take my bowl sander get the extraction running wear a mask and get the fan up here running as well and I'll finish it down to 400 and with the piece sanded down to 600 I've applied some oil but no sanding sealer just yet um, and people say that you can bring back the purple of Purple Heart by applying heat to it. So I tried it with the hot air gun just in the middle there and although hopefully you can see that the purple has come back, I'm a bit scared to be honest because um, I've messed up Purple Heart in the past by applying too much heat. I know that in a few days, maybe a week, 
the colour will get back to this to this kind of nice deep purple colour. So I'm not going to apply heat to the piece to um, to bring back the purple. Although on the front or the top of the piece I might do something. But you'll see. So with the bowl reversed in the chuck and um, the piece faced off, I want to decide how thick or how wide I want my rim. And if you follow me regularly, you'll know that I like quite a thick rim, much like this piece over here. Much like this piece that I turned um, the other day. And I think I'm going to go with something a little bit similar to this because of what I'm going to be putting on onto the rim. I want to make a really big bold feature of the rim and have quite a small bowl. So let's work out how big we want the rim to be. So I'm going to make a couple of marks. That's too big, no, too small rather. But if I have a look towards the back of the piece for a nice symmetry between the top and the bottom and if I'm happy with the bottom, I can make the bowl the same diameter as the foot. A bit bigger. There. So that's how big the bowl's going to be. It might look a little bit odd, but I reckon it's going to be lovely. Well, I hope it's going to be lovely anyway. Yes, I think you'll agree that's quite bold. So I'm going to sand the whole thing down to 400 again and then I can start playing with the top which I'm really looking forward to. So having dusted down the lathe and rested the piece on the, on the bed um, I can see the piece nice and clearly and I want to create kind of um, swirly patterns sort of yeah sort of swirly patterns um, that blend the inside and outside lines together but creating sort of open spaces if that uh, if that kind of makes sense so I'm just going to kind of wrong pencil there it is it's behind my ear um, I'm just going to kind of pull these lines around I hope you can see those So the texture I want to put in is going in here. Even I'm having trouble seeing it, so I don't know what you can see. So for the texture, um, I was toying with the idea of um, using some kind, well, using a Dremel and then staining, but then I thought actually I can get a dark colour and texture by using a very hot um, pyrography pen. So I've got um, a different pyrography pen than what I normally use, um, and this one is by a company called Yannick. Or Janik, probably Yannick, um, and it uses solid tips. And as you can probably see here, this one is glowing red. Um, and I've got a, a Purple Heart pen blank, and I just want to see what kind of effect I can get with it. When it 
it's very hot and I like that that's going to look nice it's going to take me a very long time to do all this so let's um, start now I've got I think you can see the, uh, the marks where I want the texture and the burn to be so I'm going to start with that one and go round the pencil line and then kind of randomly fill in the rest of the the gaps with a single dot each time. It's going to take me a little while to uh, <coughs> to do this, so um, I'll uh, I'll do it, and then I'll return when it's done, and I'll tell you how long it's taken. half past seven the day after the day before and um, there is the piece on the lathe I stopped filming after I did the burn and um, the, the pyrography bits um, which I think look really nice um, and then I, I did say that I wasn't going to do anything with the blowtorch or applying heat to it but I did um, and it's darkened up the purple nicely a bit too much I think um, and also left a nice little scorch mark on the inside of the bowl there um, and also a little around the rim as well and I really like those two bits but the actual purple heart bit itself I think is a little bit too dark oh well another lesson learned and again I haven't been <laughs> particularly successful with purple heart so um, I've put a coat of oil on it as well which has um, doubly darkened it down um, but the next step will be to put sanding sealer on Actually, that's looking much nicer now I've got the sanding sealer on it. And having rubbed back the sanding sealer, I can apply the wax. And then there's the tricky problem of the tenon. Now, if I had some bowl reversing jaws, it wouldn't be so much of a problem, but I don't. So I'm going to have to reverse mount it using a friction chuck and what I've got here is a, is a lump of um, oak which I've scooped out a little bit in the middle, um, covered it with some of that stuff that you get in um, uh, hi-fi and TV packaging, put a little tenon on the bottom of it so it fits in the chuck and then I'll take some, some non-slip draw line which I got from um, Ikea, slide the bowl in over there, you need to make sure that your jam chuck is um, as large, as, as close to the diameter of the inside of the bowl as possible, a little bit of pressure on the tailstock to keep it all in place, not too much and then the friction of the tailstock against the jam chuck there, or friction drive, will uh, keep the bowl in place while you carefully remove the tenon with a spindle gouge. You don't want the lathe running too quickly. And then Now remember to undercut the bowl foot a little bit as well.
Now you've got to be really, really careful when you get to this point because if you go too far, this little spigot can snap off, your bowl comes off and scratches and it's a, you know, it's a nightmare. And then you can put your Jacob's chuck into your scroll chuck and use your bowl sander attachment to sand off the spigot and flatten the bottom of the bowl. And then as a final touch, if you've got one, you can use a buffing wheel to buff up the piece. And there we go, here is the finished piece. I'm actually quite pleased with it. I was a little bit worried about the, the black um, the black marks and the really, really dark purple, but overall it has come up really, really nicely. The wax finish and um, with the buffing at the end has really, really brought it up. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week's turning project video. Uh, please do like, share and subscribe if you wish and if you do leave a comment I will reply as soon as possible but it's not always easy to get back to you very very quickly. So I don't know what I'm going to call this piece if anything um, but it'll be on the uh, project description. Um, yep, yeah, thank you very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye for now.